Mr. Dean, uh, first and foremost, can you, uh, what can we read from the, the lower voter turnout in these elections? Does it mean that the Egyptian does not have faith uh, in LCC, or do they have faith in LCC? We can rather? read. I mean, that's, that's, that's the most glaring uh, sign, you know. We can read that many are disillusioned with the political process. Many feel that, uh, that you know, their voices are being shunned, and thus it's, you know, it would be useless voting, and that's why we see um, such a low turnout, especially amongst mm -hmm. the youth, which uh, is basically, you know, uh, the, you know, who speared the 2011 mm -hmm. uprising. Now, some Egyptians were almost slapped with a fine for not voting. Uh, I didn't know that uh, voting was, uh, uh, was uh, essential, in, uh, that much essential in Egypt. Um, it was seen, you know, uh, Sisi wanted to, to project the image that he has a mandate from the majority of Egyptians. And mm -hmm. thus far, this is not, you know, so we saw, we saw you know, when, when queues were little during the first day, mm -hmm. the second day was declared a public holiday. When, when, <laughs> you know, when turnout was still low, they then extended elections to the third day. Mm -hmm. So it is compulsory in Egypt that, they need, that people need to vote? Uh, I don't think it would mm -hmm. be. I mean, I think it's it being enforced uh, that people, or be, people are being uh, requested to vote just for mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the, the men uh, to provide Sisi the mandate. But previously it wasn't. I don't think it was compulsory for people to vote. Overall, looking at the elections in Egypt, uh, would, would you think that it was f free and fair? Um, you could argue that it was, uh, you know, uh, free. Uh, I mean, it was fair in that mm -hmm. the, the result may be right, but it was not necessarily free. You know, the atmosphere is one of intolerance, one of discrimination, one of the closing of dissent. And most opposition, um, you know, uh, other uh, elect I mean, uh, presidential candidates pulled out uh, alleging state interference, alleging, you know, uh, the state backing certain candidates, alleging, um, you know, widespread uh, abuse of... Um, and curbs in freedoms. Mm -hmm. Was this result expected though? Yeah, it's, it's you know, the question before the election wasn't uh, about whether CCO would win or not. It would just be by what margin and with what turnout. Mm -hmm. What sort of power does this provide to CC and his government? I mean, he's been in, 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 in control for the past year since the ouster of Mohamed Morsi. It just now shows that, um, you know, now he, he's more overtly in control of, Egyptian, of Egypt. And, um, you know, it just, it just continues the military's dominance over Egyptian politics. Mm -hmm. now, now, during the army's rule, after the former president Mohamed Morsi was deposed, um, uh, there have been reports of uh, media clampdown. And recently, Al-Sisi also vowed that he will destroy the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, what can we expect? from his term? The, the Brotherhood, you know, the, the, the Muslim Brotherhood attempts are still being made and will still be made to curb them down. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all forms of dissent are being cracked down. Just last month, April 6th, which was a group that was influentially in the 2011 uh, uprising, uh, a liberal group was, uh, uh, you know, put on trial for sedition. Um, and this will, you know, it will continue. However, you know, Pew released a poll last Thursday which showed that many Egyptians, actually most Egyptians, uh, feel that the country is going in the wrong direction and thus we'll, we'll continue witnessing opposition to Sisi's uh, rule. What does it say, though, about his leadership style, El Sisi? Uh, I mean, it, he is a military man and military men, you know, are, are trained and they cut in a certain cloth normally, um, you know, uh, intolerant, uh, heavy-handed, and, it and it's showing in how he's... Um, He's, he's looking at things and, and what policies he plans on enacting. Now, now, do you think, though, that these elections will stabilize the country's struggling economy since uh, uh, the, the uprising that, that saw the, the, the president, the elected, democratically elected president, that is, we, we might add, uh, was de de deposed? I mean, it doesn't look like it would, you know, um, specifically because uh, from CC's economic problem, uh, program, all he views is, is in stabilizing the, sta uh, the economy is just more state interference. Mm -hmm. And there's already enough state interference in this, you know, the Egyptian economy. Um, and it's not been successful thus far. It's not necessarily going to be successful in the future. Will tensions maybe ease a little bit more in Egypt now after the election? I think, you know, it could be argued that, uh, that this may be provide an opportunity for, you know, a reconciliation, mm -hmm. uh, which, would, um, which would, would ensure stability, which would ensure, you know, more openness and more inclusiveness and in a, in a, in a better prosperous economy. Um, however, from what Sisi said thus far, it, uh, you know, it, the chances are minimal. Mm -hmm. Where does this leave the Muslim Brotherhood? The Muslim Brotherhood, you know, it's a grassroots movement. So the grassroots part, uh, you know, uh, uh, activities that, the, I mean, the grassroots involvement of the movement will continue. Uh, the Pew poll that released last week said that 38% of Egyptians view the Muslim Brotherhood favorably. So it shows that the cracking down on dissent is not working. However, you know, from a political uh, um, a position, the Brotherhood is very weak, is severely weak and most of its uh, leadership is in prison. And um, it's in limbo, in a sense. 
Mr. Dean, thank you so much uh, for coming in and joining us here. That's Ibrahim Dean. He is the Middle East analyst, uh, giving us more analysis on the, uh, the presidential elections in Egypt. Now, staying uh, or coming back rather to South Africa, free state members of the provincial legislature will be sworn in today. The ceremony will take place at the Tabong Recreational Center outside Welcome. Now, for more on this, we are joined by SABC reporter Zamasa Mbeu. Zamasa, good morning to you. And when is the swearing ceremony?